Hi again, so in this section, we're going to look at uh, triggering from a digital events perspective. And in order to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to use uh, SPI. Now this is the serial peripheral interface. And uh, many of you may not understand uh, about SPI. So here's a very, very <laughs> brief introduction to it. SPI um, is a master slave type uh, configuration where you have a clock um, generated by your master system and uh, data is uh, both transmitted and received at the same time uh, by the MISO and the uh, MISI pin, which is the in and this is the out. Um, now, this display that we're going to use to demonstrate this only receives data. It doesn't actually return data. And that's why we've only got the uh, MISO uh, output. This is the chip select um, and all SPI devices require a chip select um, to tell the device uh, what the uh, clock and the data is relevant to, which device to want to talk to. Um, so you can actually network these, but each device on the network must have its own chip enable or chip select. So that's what uh, what's going on in here. So how do I go about demonstrating this? Oh, and just uh, uh, briefly, uh, mode naught um, is specified by the idle state of the clock and the way in which data is actually latched um, uh, in uh, to actually either to, uh, trans transmit the data uh, when it's uh, stable or to actually shift data back out. And so in this case, on the rising edge of the clock, you, this is when you sample data and on the falling edge of the clock, this is when data is shifted out. Um, so that's a point, of, uh, a point at which data will change on your data bus. So that's just the definition of mode naught. Now, how are we going to demonstrate this? Well, what I've done is, let me just swap my camera over and here, you will see uh, this uh, may be familiar to you with some, some, some of the other videos. This is uh, the sensor development platform as used by my MEC 2200 students at the University of Leeds. And here we have a microcontroller, which is actually uh, the master unit to drive the uh, SPI. Now, this port here is a general purpose output port for um, uh, for I squared C or SPI devices. And normally this is the display that we're talking about. And this would normally plug straight into this port. However, in this case, I want to break out the wires so that I can actually look at this and demonstrate to you what happens and how to capture um, uh, a protocol type signal. Okay, and this is what we're doing uh, in this um, uh, in this session. So the other important thing uh, to note about this is that this microcontroller is also running a uh, an HMI, that's a human machine interface, and it allows us to inter interact with this from a terminal emulator. And here is the comms port to allow us to do that. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap my screen over and show you how the HMI works. So let me just swap this over, go to the terminal emulator and here you will see the terminal emulator um, uh, HMI. Now, this HMI, let me just split my screen so that you can see what's going on here. Right, so that HMI that you see here is being generated from this microcontroller. And it allows me to control when I send data out in the SPI to this display. So just to give you an idea of what's going on, I'm actually going to go to this HMI and I'm going to tell it uh, to send data to the display. Now, uh, just so that you're aware, if I go uh, into the data sheet for the display, this is the command set for the display. So if I want to clear the display, I just send the command 76 out in hex um, to the display and that will clear it. If I want to uh, send uh, data to the display, then what I can do is I can set the cursor position on the display. So this is what the 79 command does. And then I send another byte, which tells me, do I want to start with the uh, leftmost digit or do I want to start with the uh, next digit or the next one, etc. And so there are four digits, in this dis four digits in this display. Therefore, we can choose zero through to three. And then once I've sent that command, I can actually send the ASCII uh, characters for uh, the display. So I can go, for example, if I want to do one, two, three, four on my display, I would send out 79 first. I'm going to start on the leftmost uh, digit. So I send zero and then I send the ASCII one, two, three, four to my display. So that's roughly what's going on when I do this. So let's go back to um, our HMI. 
And so you can see this for real. In order to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to the uh, Test 23, which is my seven segment display. And here I can actually now control my display. And I'm going to go to option number two, and I'm gonna type in one, two, three, four. And if you look at the display, um, which is in the window on the right hand side, when I press enter here, you'll see uh, on the display here, you'll see one, two, three, four coming up and equally, if I want to clear the display, I can type in number one in my uh, HMI, and you'll now see the display is being cleared. So I just want you to know what's going on behind the scenes. And, uh, and so this is sending out SPI commands on the bus. So how do we actually um, extract all of this information? So let's, uh, let's go to our, um, our Picascope, and I'm just gonna get rid of my split screen like that. So, I'm going to set this up once again from a place of knowledge. OK, so what do I know about my setup? Well, first of all, I'm going to look at channel A and I'm using times 10 probes. So I'm going to set my probes to times 10. And on the vertical scale, remember, I'm working with digital signals that are going from naught to uh, five volts. And uh, so uh, if I set this to, uh, to five plus minus five, then I might go over range. So it's best to set to plus minus 10. So I'm going to set that to plus or minus 10. And um, there's a DC coupling, everything else is uh, normal there. So I'm also going to channel B. I'm going to switch that onto manual. My probes are on times 10. And the vertical, once again, is going to be 0 to 10 volts, which is great. And uh, let's see, what uh, else do we need to set up? So uh, once again, it's a DC coupling and no other settings on there. So that's great. Now my SPI is running at with a clock of 125 kilohertz. So I'm gonna set this to 10 microseconds, which is approximately the sort of time, um, time base I need to be looking at. And also I'm going to look at the trigger, uh, which uh, I'm now going to set to this to normal. I could use single or normal, but because I've got control through my HMI, then I don't need to go to single shot because it will only show me what I trans, uh, it'll catch whatever I transmit under my key commands through my HMI. So I don't need to go to single, I can go to normal in this case, which is great. Uh, we're going to go to simple edge, which is fine. We're going to trigger on channel A, which is our clock source. And I'm going to leave the pre-trigger at 50. And I'm going to set my threshold because my digital signal is going from 2.5 volts. Uh, well, there's a midpoint 2.5 volts. So that would be good. So uh, I know it will capture it. And there you will see uh, my trigger point. Now I'm gonna separate out these waveforms because they're both based around the zero volts line here. So my two channels, so I'm just gonna raise this one up here and I'm going to bring my channel B down to here so that I can separate out these signals and see them in a bit more detail. So I've now got this uh, pretty much set up to go. Um, so let's now go into the uh, HMI and I'm just going to use the simple command. Let me just show you what this is. I'm just going to send the clear display command, which is a single byte command, which is transmitting 76 in hex. So let me go to my HMI. I'm going to press number one to clear the display. And now let's go to my uh, uh, scope. Now in the background, it's been capturing this, which is great. Now you'll see here that, um, it's uh, slightly overrun here because I've got, um, this is a byte uh, transmission. So I've got eight clock cycles to get the full eight bits of my byte transmitted, but we've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, uh, and uh, seven there. So I haven't got it. And my time base is actually not quite right for seeing this data. So I've got two options. I can either change my time base and make it a little bit slower so I can catch all, uh, more data in the time frame. Alternatively, I can change my pre-trigger because I'm not so interested in what's happening before here. So what I might do is change my pre-trigger, change it to 10%. And now you'll see it's shifted the waveform across. And now what I can do is rerun my HMI to get another scan. And I'm going to go one and enter and now go back to my scope and now you will see uh, my SPI data. So I've got the full uh, eight bits and so I can now analyze these in data. Now remember uh, from my uh, presentation here 
that on the rising edge, that's when I actually can look at the data and clock the data to find out what's going on. So let me go back to my scope. So on the rising edge, my data is valid. So if I look at this on the rising edge here, we've got a zero data state at the moment. And if I go on this point here, it's a one. This point here on the rising edge, it's a one. This point here, rising edge, it's a one. This point here is a zero. This point here, it's a one. Uh, this point here, it's a one. This point here, it's a zero. So that means that my data being transmitted is zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, zero. And that in um, hex is 76, which is the command that I've sent out. So it's looking good. It's uh, That's great. But what about looking at um, a uh, signal where I've actually got more data? So what I'm now going to do is I want to see more data. I've got to shut my time, time base down again. So let's have a look, go to my time base and let me go to 100 microseconds per division. And now um, because it needs to do a rescan, so I'm now going to issue the same command on my HMI and going to clear the display and just show you that. There we go. It's redone a scan. It's picked up the um, start of my clock. And because I'm in control of the transmission, this is why in the uh, from a trigger perspective, in normal mode is fine because I'm controlling when this data is issued. So I don't need to use single shot. Um, so there we go. There's my uh, clock uh, signals, uh, all eight of them, and there's my data. So now let me um, send a different command out. So let me just go and look at this. So I'm going to send out the cursor control command, which is 79. I'm then going to say start from the leftmost digit. So it's going to then send out zero. And then I'm going to send out the numbers one, two, three, four, which is um, which uh, which are ASCII equivalents of the uh, of those digits one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's going to go seventy nine, zero, and then ASCII one, two, three, four. So let's go to my HMI, and I'm now going to go to option two here, which is the load numerical string from digit uh, one, which is less left justified. So I'm going to go to uh, two and then I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Now let me just split my screen so that you can see this, if I can find the split screen. So you'll see at the moment the display is clear, but as soon as I press enter here, you'll see those digits have now come up as one, two, three, four on my display. And if I now go to my figure scope, you will now clearly see that five digits have been transmitted. The first one, let's just go back here. The first digit that was transmitted will be um, 79 and the next one will be zero. So let's have a look at that. So here we go. There's the first digit here um, and that's the uh, 79. The second digit here is zero. All my data bits are zero. And the rest are the ASCII characters one, two, three, and four, which you can see here. Now I'm not going into detail about expanding this and analyzing this because this is not about triggering. This is about, um, that's about zooming in and doing other things. And that really is a separate video, but this is about how to set up triggering so you can actually get and capture what you want to see. Okay. So um, what would also be interesting to see is um, the, uh, what's going on. Oh, let me just uh, get rid of, um, uh, my split screen here because I keep on forgetting to turn that off. Uh, there we go. Right. Um, so what would be interesting to also now see is where's the chip enable in all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, go back to my circuit and rather than looking on channel two, which is this channel here, looking at the data output, I'm going to change this uh, to the chip enable and I'm just going to push that into there and I'm now going to go back to my uh, picoscope. I'm now going to go back to the HMI and I'm going to now reissue what I just did so I'm, I can change the characters. Let me just split my screen so you can see this. There we go. So what I can now do is go into option number two and I can go uh, five, six, seven and eight and then press enter. You'll see now that five, six, seven, eight has come up on my display. But what I'm interested now is um, in what the chip enable has been doing. So I'm just going back to my screen here and also going to the picoscope and it uh, hasn't picked it. 
Oh, I don't quite know why it hasn't been that. That could be because I'm trying to do screen capture and stuff at the same time. Let me just go back into my HMI. <laughs> it's live television, folks. Uh, let's go to two and um, five, six, seven, and eight, and enter. And let's go. There we go. Yay. <laughs> it caught it this time. So um, now you'll see this is the chip enable. And if I bring the chip enable up or just bring these two signals closer together you can see that in accordance to um, the SPI protocol the chip enable has to drop first before the clock data comes out and when the when all the data has been transmitted you can raise the chip enable and here uh, in my scope you can see exactly that you can see the chip enable has gone down there's my five bytes that have been transmitted and then when it's complete, the chip enable has gone back up again. And if I had a uh, three or four channel scope, then I would be using this chip enable as really my primary trigger so I can look at everything relative to that edge. But because I've only got a two channel scope, I have to decide what's the most important thing in this case. And so this is where you can actually select your sources, either source A or source B, um, in this case, to decide where your priorities lie and what you want to see. So I hope that's actually made sense and you've seen it from a digital perspective. And uh, let's go back to the presentation. So in this uh, final bit, um, we're gonna look at um, switch bounce analysis. And this is really interesting from a scope triggering perspective, okay? 